government about seven hundred thousand dollars to fight this lawsuit against veterans in BC. Can you address that cost and, and why you feel this lawsuit is still worth fighting? Well, um, I don't want to comment in too much detail on something that's before the courts, but I will just say this: that it's uh, the first matter I looked into as minister. What about uh, today, the deadline for implementing the AG's recommendations? Can you give any indication of where you're planning to go with those recommendations? Well, some of the things we started working on while the AG was finalizing his report, particularly some of the cumbersome and long forms that were causing delays and sendbacks and things to the veterans, um, he actually got feedback from the, the Legion on helping simplify that. The department looked at that. So we've moved on that already. Um, we're With the OSI clinics, the Operational Stress Injury Clinics, we're opening across the country. We're hoping that geographic dispersion will help with some of the delays, um, which even the AG said is a result in some, in some ways of the shortage of mental health professionals that the provinces are experiencing, the Canadian Forces, veterans. So with these specialized clinics, we'll hopefully be able to get veterans faster uh, assessments get their claims processed. But Minister, the problem that the AG really highlighted was that a lot of veterans were being de unfairly denied at the outset and then had to appeal and it took a very long time to get those appeals overturned, I get the decisions overturned. How do, you, how do you fix something like that? It seems very difficult from anything but a bureaucratic fix. Well, what we want to see is is the department learning. from If, if anything was, uh, was uh, changed on review, obviously what was missing on the first time the, the uh, case was looked at. We want the department to learn more from that first contact. In some cases it might have been incomplete information, but if there was a, an assessment change in the review, we want to learn from that so that we can avoid that. At the same time, we have to recognize that Canada actually has one of the, the most robust re review processes in the world. We have four stages where a veteran can have uh, something reconsidered, and we actually pay for the legal coverage uh, for supporting them in that process. We're the only country that does that. But certainly we want to get it right the first time as much as possible. So how do, you, how do you make that happen, though? How do you make that happen, that the approval rate increases at the first stage instead of after the review? Well, part of it will be by simplifying the, the form process and allowing faster medical assessments using the clinics that we're opening. But a lot of it will be learning. So if there was uh, a determination that was incorrect, you know, what can we learn from that in, in, in uh, the next time that there's a similar circumstance? What we want to say is, if somebody has a mental injury as a result of their service, first come forward, it's Bell Let's Talk Day, so come forward because there is help there and in a lot of cases the help can get the person right back to what they were doing if they get help. But quickly. I understand what you're saying, say let's learn from the process, but I don't understand specifically what the department is doing to actually learn from To make from sure that people are learning. Yeah. The, 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 the mental health expertise within Veterans Affairs is something that we're going to look at very seriously. In fact, Veterans Affairs will soon be getting a Surgeon General, much like the Canadian Forces has. We're even going to use similar language so that there's not a disconnect between people in uniform, which is usually when your injury occurs, and when you transfer to Veterans Affairs. That new Surgeon General within Veterans Affairs will also build up additional mental health expertise to try and assess this, because it's not just PTSD, it's operational stress injuries of a whole range. And so if we can get better expertise right at the front line understanding these, these injuries, that'll be a faster process. I, I have to go to my next